I'm going to be very candid with you. We are living in a computer program reality. Welcome everyone to Simulation Nation, your portal for all things virtual. I'm your host, Johnny Android, and I'm here to keep you informed about all that's happening in the metaverse. We record our episodes live in all space every week, and you can join us for free, even if you don't have a VR headset. Yes, it's true. Just log into all space from your laptop or PC, join our event, and teleport in to offer your opinion, question, or whatever else. Today, we're talking to the operator and founder of the Floating Point Art Gallery, which is a meta gallery that lives in virtual reality and explores not only the frontier of art, also online marketplaces and digital publishing models for artists. We talk about the role of NFTs for experience running a gallery in the metaverse and the state of digital art with the new proliferation of AI, such as Midjourney and Dolly 2. We're happy to have Candace back on this stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm emoji welcome for Candace. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me again. It's my second time here, actually. <laughs> I know. This is very exciting. Uh, I've seen mm -hmm. from our friend thing here, we've, we've been friends for 21 months, so we must have had you on here uh, almost two years ago, which is basically the beginning of the show. Um, and yeah. you've noticed a few changes. We have a new world and things are moving and they've expanded a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think I haven't been here in a year, something like that. I keep browsing your website sometimes and listening to your podcasts, but I should come more often. It's a good reminder that podcasts and people like you are having like such amazing initiatives. And I should come to, you know, meet new people and uh, see your community growing. I'm, I'm just so happy to see your podcast becoming so advanced in terms of what we can do in virtual reality. Look at the stage. <laughs> we are moving oh. around. It's amazing. I love the concept. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Candice. It's very sweet <laughs> of you to say. And uh, we loved talking with you last time. Just to give a little bit of a, uh, a context as to last time, I think it's a good spot for our conversation to start. When we were on this mm -hmm. stage last time, NFTs were literally unknown. Like we we were we were do, we thought we were on the, the avant garde the cutting edge and we were like oh there's this thing called NFTs that are going to change the art world. I'd love mm -hmm. to catch up with you over the last 24 to uh, or I guess it was 12 to 24 months. Uh, mm -hmm. How has that um, manifested? How has that come true or not true in what we were talking about back then? Well, the art, mar the art market, the traditional art market has changed a lot, like dramatically. Um, it's, it was a good reminder that artists can take the lead. Artists are innovative and they are able to change the scene. They are able to force uh, a traditional industry to use new technologies. And it was um, an artist initiated by artists for artists. And this is where I, I, find, I find it very interested. Um, it, it was not about museum institutions, it wasn't about uh, auction houses or, or art dealers or blue chip artists, it was about new emerging artists like people we never heard about before. So it's definitely an excited new movement. Uh, I think it's going to mark the, the traditional art history and definitely we will study it in like maybe 10, 15 years when new students will come in universities to study what is art history and what are the important movements that mark the different transition of one movement to another one. Yeah, so that's interesting. So, you, so uh, not only has it, it gone mainstream, but you think it's actually a lot of the things that we were hoping would come true are coming true. The democratization of art, the able the mm -hmm. ability to monetize art. So, of course, I feel like, though, there is a bit of a backlash. Um, and I think that's partly due to the PFPs and these, the, uh, you know, bored apes becoming worth a million dollars and people thinking this is outrageous. This can't last. Uh, this is a big bubble and it's so obnoxious. How do you um, how do you uh, gauge what's happening in the art world in terms of that backlash? Yeah, definitely. Obnoxious is a really good word to describe what happened with the NFT scene. There were a lot of people who were just intriguing, but money um, tends to attract a lot of people a new crowd, you know what I mean? And we had a lot of investors and people who just wanted to spend their money without knowing the roles of the traditional art market, what it means to support an artist, 
what it means to discover new artists, what you have to do as an art collector, how you should behave, um, why you should maybe collaborate with commercial art galleries and art dealers in order to acquire new artworks. Um, how do you find uh, new pieces versus counterfeits? Like, how do you navigate this world, especially with digital marketplaces? Uh, it's really challenging if you don't know how the traditional art market works. And I think a lot of people got hacked, uh, acquired fake artworks, and got lost mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm, definitively. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is really interesting. I, I think there are some truly authentic, interesting art coming out of it. I think, like, uh, I think of uh, art blocks and uh, certain things like that that are legitimate uh, art movies, the Ringer series and things like that. Um, I think there are some true ones. I think that you're right, though. As soon as something new comes and it becomes super trendy, 90% mm -hmm. of it we'll forget about, but it's that 10% that maybe will survive. Um, and so, so you're of the believer that we should look to the big picture and not get caught up in what is trending in the moment and just see that the mm -hmm. NFTs are a big picture trend that will continue. Is that what you would say? Definitely. I'm very positive about what happened uh, during the past two years. And uh, I tend to think that it's actually good for the traditional art market. Uh, it's good to have uh, a new movement, a new medium to work on. Like, um, And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for many emerging artists to find a market. So um, I see it with a positive eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, if anyone has any opinion here, a uh, city girl, I know you, you, sh you run a show called uh, crypto city, where you talk about a lot of NFTs and art. If you have any thoughts or questions also, I'd love to hear from you or Dave, the Turner Calamander. Uh, wow. Enjoy it. It's a, it's a, a bit high, heavy hitting show today. You guys are, uh, super, uh, powerful, talented, uh, folks of the metaverse here. Um, so, <laughs> um, so, so okay. Okay. So, so moving beyond NFTs, I think that now what's interesting is you know, 20 months later or whatever it is, is all of a sudden, now we've got this whole new wave of art that's happening with Midjourney, mm -hmm. Dolly 2, OpenAI. It's like an explosion. So we had an event here this summer. I think it was early July. And um, and it, at that time, so we had uh, uh, my friend on here who has now become a AI prompt engineer. That's literally what he does now because he was really a little bit ahead of the curve. And he came up here and talked about all of these different things. And it was kind of like, no one really knew what it was. And we, you know, and, it, and now it's, it's like, if you don't know what it is, you, you're, you have your eyes closed because it's so huge and it's, it's taken over everything. How do you think that's going to impact art? Because if I was an artist and I saw this mid journey art uh, coming out from a text prompt, I would be terrified to be honest. How, uh, what do you think? How does the art world look at that? Uh, it's a it's a whole it's it's a, it's a new story about the, the challenging of the art market. You know, it's a new medium, and uh, AI plays a lot with reappropriation, uh, utilization of artworks that already exist, and can be changed with just a prompt. Uh, it, it's about machine learning. It's about computer engineering. I think it's amazing. Uh, my husband is a computer scientist. And no more than two years ago, he was doing his master's degree in uh, computer science, studying AI and uh, computer vision, machine learnings. And he told me that everything he learned two years ago in his master's degree, today he doesn't even use it on his job. So it means that he has to learn everything again about AI, everything again about computer vision. I think we are just at the beginning. And this is where it gets exciting because we don't know where it will stop. Uh, I think for like if we if we watch what is AI for the perspective of the art market, it's just a new medium, a new playground for artists, and it's going to be something else that we will study in the future. And it's probably going to have a huge impact on how to make art, how we uh, receive art, how we consume art. So it's just it's it's, it's new challenges once again, and. Um, I love challenging. <laughs> it's, it's I think great, it's great. But, it's really so, exciting. <laughs> yeah, for me though, you know, I'm a, a you know very untalented artist. I can go on to Discord. I can type in a bunch of prompts. You know, I want to have a uh, you know a metaverse city uh, with a cyberpunk walking down it in the style of Salvador Dali. 
and suddenly I'm an artist and I get the rights to that artwork. Um, so if I was an artist with true talent and I suddenly saw this tool that allowed everyone to appear to have talent, how do you differentiate what is good art and what is not, what is valuable, what is not? How, who, how does that, how do you decide that? Uh, it's it's one of the oldest question. What is art? How can we define uh, an artistic an artistic product? I think we had the same challenging when we were talking about conceptual art. When uh, um, uh, Duchamp took a urinoir and put it on in a museum uh, space and and said this is a mu this is an artwork, so we need to consider it as an artwork. Is it an artwork? We need to start to open the debate. Or when Jackson Pollock was just drawing paintings on a canvas, is it an artwork? How long does it take? What if if it takes five minutes versus five hours versus five hundred <laughs> hours? Like how do we define what is art? I think it's just about history. It's about movements. It's about people being together and thinking collectively about the boundaries of art. And then these people create collectives and theories and they practice and they push the medium and they redefine every time even new movements, the perspective of art, the definition of art. And it's incredible to see that art since two never stops. Like we always find new definitions. We always find a way, artists mm. always find a way to push the boundaries. Um, mm. It's It makes us unique and beautiful in a certain way because there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no stop. <laughs> there's no fences. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm so fascinated uh, how this is going to go because you never could have predicted that you never could have predicted a year ago that something would be essentially free and within 10 seconds, give me a piece of artwork and then how that would change the world. So how could I, we can't possibly predict it is going to come out of all of this because it's moving so fast. And it's just, it's like we're being rolled over by AI that is just coming at us like a freight train, right? Exactly. It's the fact that you're talking that it's moving so fast is true. So I got the opportunity to teach uh, immersive technology now at French University in Ontario. And uh, the department wants me to teach about immersive media. So I teach the, teach the, the students uh, 360 photos, 360 videos, like all technology. Like we are talking about 2012, 2015. Um, and, and then virtual reality, augmented reality, photogrammetry. And the fact that you were already talking about AI art makes me believe that all these immersive, new immersive tools, are, it's going so fast. It's hard to keep up because we still need 360 videos. We still need 360 photos. We can still do so much in terms of uh, practicing this technology, using it for the general public. And now we're talking about AI. Um, everything is going very fast. Uh, and yeah, it, it's hard to keep up, definitely. I wish I was a computer scientist sometimes to be able to understand the intricacies of the technology, you know, mm. and yeah. um, uh, learning it like my husband do, like from the code, you know, from yeah. with math. <laughs> yeah. He's able to understand the technology with math. And, and sometimes I, I believe that I should know math more to understand what's right. happening around us. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the amazing part is you don't need to know math anymore. You just get an AI assistant who knows the math, and then you <laughs> exactly. tell them to code what you want them to code, <laughs> and then they'll do it. So it's like exactly. AI solves all problems. It really is the panacea <laughs> until it takes over and says, oh, by the way, humans, you're now our pets, and we're going to take over from here. Thanks so much for you know mm -hmm. everything you've done for us, and now you know, see you later. That's <laughs> Until then, it's a golden age, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yes, right. definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's it's even a bit scary because you know we were talking about the boundaries of art, but we can talk also about the boundaries of um, uh, intelligence uh, artificial. Like where where does it start? Where does it end? Where where does it go? Um, we don't know yet, but we know that he has a, a lot of potential to impact a lot of businesses and our everyday life. So it's a bit scary, of course, because mm -hmm. you know we are talking about machines taking over humans, 
It's a bit exciting too. <laughs> it's a bit exciting too to see, you know, what's going to happen, but it, it's it's scary, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll move on for this to, to your other projects because you've done a lot of really interesting things here. But, uh, the, the, you know, just talking about how quickly it's moving. So right now we're on GB3, GBT3 model. And uh, in they think in February or, you know, within the first quarter of next year, GBT4 is coming out. And what a, we are able to do today with still images in about three months, we're going to be able to do with moving images. We'll be able mm. to create little movies. right? will be able to be as incredible and as inventive and as imaginative as the still images today. So that's how quickly it's moving. Another thing mm -hmm. I, I would say, which uh, I think is really fascinating, and it speaks to a lot of what you're saying about there has no boundaries and, and no fear. You know, we mm -hmm. had a, a friend of mine, uh, Shadi Safadi, who was on this stage uh, a while ago, and he was the art director of The Last of Us in The Last of Us Part Two, the video games. Oh, this art house uh, it creates mm -hmm. video game environments and video game art. He mm -hmm. was basically saying, guys, the whole game has changed. Uh, the reason <laughs> that I think that AI is actually better than humans at some kind of conceptual art, because AI does not fear. Don't fear being judged. Mm -hmm. Don't fear being called weird. Don't fear doing something that no one will like and saying that you have bad taste. AI just does it and has no emotion behind it. And that's what makes AI good because it's a fearless artist. So I don't know, mm -hmm. crazy, right? So AI is, has its own libre arbitre, like think by itself, act by itself, um, and not being influenced by the society, uh, external visions or like anybody. Oh, it's, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. So, um, Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about pointing, uh, Floating Point Gallery and your idea mm -hmm. behind it and uh, how it immerses its uh, in virtual reality and um, you know uh, new types of experiences like you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, originally, I am the founder of a marketing agency for the traditional art market. It's called Art Collision. I started it just before the pandemic in July 2020, uh, 2019. And I help the traditional art market to adopt new technologies. And uh, I improve their digital presence. I build their websites and I integrate these immersive experiences to their website. So it's been great. But uh, I'm also working with a lot of people. So, you know, art dealers that are working since like 50, 60 years, uh, old art collectors, uh, very traditional and conservative people. And I was thinking something is missing. We need a gallery space in Canada where we can promote talented Canadian artists. So I decided in March 2022 to launch Floating Point Gallery to uh, have a presence in the metaverse and to represent a roster of talented Canadian artists. Um, so far, we are representing five artists. They are all working at the intersection of art and new technologies. So they all have a background in, the tra in traditional arts, but they play with the web free, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, photogrammetry, 360 photos, 3D modelizations, um, even AI, uh, one of them has, has a, um, um, a digital twin. So it's trying to even question his own identity by having a digital twin that he use in metaverses instead of himself. And it's so interesting to see this artist thinking about what we can do in virtual environments. So I wanted to give him a, a place to do it. Um, I'm very good in project management, and I'm also very good at finding money. It's very important. You need to find <laughs> money to be to able to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to be able to be supported by the government. That was my first priority. So being recognized by the establishment, by the traditional art market. Um, so we were recognized as traditional art dealers. We find fundings, then we develop project per project. Everything is very slow, but every time I want to make sure to pay the artist correctly and be able to develop very meaningful projects. Oh, amazing. So uh, I think one of the artists that you showcased was Antoine Lorty. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Antoine. Yes, definitely. So I met him. He's the province of Quebec, so he speaks French. 
uh, is a traditional artist, traditional background, you know, um, um, uh, um, an undergrad in fine art, he did his master degree in Belgium in fine art as well, but he used uh, digital media to express himself. And I reached out to him, I think in 2021, I was like, look, I have this gallery project. I would like you to be the first artist that we represent. Let's do an exhibition and it's going to be a double exhibition. We're going to call it duplicated. We're going to have one exhibition but in two different metaverses. And the goal will be to be able to compare our curatorial experiences in these two different uh, experiences. So one of them was in Artgate VR, a virtual reality platform dedicated to host virtual reality exhibitions. And the second one was in the Web3 in crypto voxels. I got a chance to acquire a land a long time ago <laughs> mm. when it wasn't yeah. as crazy. And I had this on Thailand and I was like, yeah, let's do something <laughs> on it. So it was also an opportunity to reach out to a 3D architect, to try to think about um, different spaces we can have and how we can play with virtual reality, the web free. Um, uh, and he created uh, physical artworks, uh, NFTs, uh, digital artworks, but also wearables. I wanted to be able to uh, mm. explore the concept of wearing art because I think we're going to consume art in a different way in the future, especially mm. in virtual environments. And I thought it was really interesting to talk about the way we can wear art. And like the collection we, we have on OpenSea is really, really funky uh, because it's, it's a lot of signs and um, it's like he it, it, it develops like he designed a kind of an armor. Narmur, like it's 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 really cool. It's really nice. I really encourage you to uh, check out what he minted on uh, OpenSea. Just OpenSea floating point gallery, you will find the collection. Great, yeah, oh, I, and I, he, he's also he's also one super rare uh, because he's an early adopter. So he started to mint NFTs in 2020. So you can find his profile on Super Rare. Uh, check it out. Antoine Lorty is amazing. Oh, one of the more interesting projects I've heard about recently with NFTs is wearable NFTs. So you would have a generative art that is actually wearable. So the idea would be that you have strands of string and the you would mint it and the uh, generative AI, I guess, would uh, create, it would output uh, colors and patterns on these strings, would send the strings to you, you weave them together and wear it as a bracelet. So actually, mm. the NFT is the bracelet. You, it's a one-of-a-kind generative art piece uh, that only you own, which I think is really uh, a fascinating uh, angle. And I agree. I think we're going to move much beyond file pictures, PFPs, and we're going to go into all mm -hmm. this other interesting stuff. Um, and I, I you know, like, mm -hmm. I can I can Next time you come on the stage, we'll have to have you back you know, a year from now, and <laughs> the whole art will 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 have been up turned upside down, and I'll have a. A, a generative art, uh, one of a kind bonsai tree over there, or something like that. And, you know, it'll just be an example of how art will be uh, all around us in the metaverse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a long process. Uh, like, based on my experience, uh, you need to organize a new exhibition every time. And it takes a lot of time. Uh, we put a lot of effort in promotions. And I think this is why we had the opportunity to. Uh, do something very different. So um, uh, after these two exhibition in two different metaverses, uh, we were selected by, oh, my power is low. I'm just going to charge my headsets before I turn off. Okay. Um, uh, basically, they were saying that uh, we wanted to expand the exhibition and give the opportunity to the traditional art market to see us. So that, is that okay here, to be here? Yeah. Oh, uh, so... Yeah. Um, um, Floating Point Gallery was selected to exhibit in a traditional art fair. So for those who don't know, art fairs are um, uh, exhibition spaces, large exhibition spaces for commercial art galleries. And usually it's an opportunity to showcase paintings, sculptures, and new artworks that you have in your inventory. And it's usually a place where art galleries get selected. So it's really hard to get there. It's also very expensive. So uh, we decided to get a chance and uh, we submitted Floating Point Gallery and we had a chance to showcase what is a metaverse experience and what is an experience in a virtual reality exhibition 
to traditional people in a traditional setting, in a traditional art uh, fair. So once again, it's about building bridges between the traditional art world and the digital art scene and to try to open debates, open conversation and invite people in a peaceful way, in a conversation, conversation, conversational way to um, invite them to rethink what can be done, what is possible uh, to do to improve the way we experience art. Yeah. And um, actually, you were saying, I think when you put your headset on, you did move a little bit. So if you want to go push back just a little bit, we can make sure that everyone can see the slides there. Um, so you, know, you mentioned very quickly uh, Artgate VR. Um, you also worked with the sponsors Meta and CFC Media Lab. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. the challenges and experiences of finding sponsors? Yes, definitely. So um, we needed funds to be able to pay for the book. <laughs> Uh, shipping costs, um, marketing material, framing, transportation, everything. So we reached out to uh, Artgate VR, uh, the marketplace who we started to exhibit art. And it was really easy because it was a sp small sponsorship. So they were very exciting to support us uh, during this experience. So thank you to Artgate. Definitely, it's a great metaverse to check out. They have a great community too. And mm. then we reach out to CFC Media Lab. It's a business incubator for female entrepreneurs in Toronto. And they are focusing on immersive media. When I reached out to the director, she was really supportive uh, and she agreed to pay for the booth and uh, some extra additional cost. And finally, I was in touch with the Meta team based in Toronto. And uh, same, I reached out to them. I pitched them my project and I was like, look, I really need funds. I need help to be able to afford this event. And they were the best. <laughs> they were not just very supportive. They had no requirements. They were very flexible. And on the top of that, they gave us the opportunity to do exactly the same event in Ottawa at the National Art Centers uh, a week later. So they gave us like double opportunity, sponsorship, fundings. So I like thank you to our sponsor like Meta, CFC Media Lab, and Artgate. I couldn't do that without them, definitively. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess you know someday you'll be able to have it completely in the metaverse. I I don't think that this is a real building in the meat space world. So did you have uh, the gallery that was there a twin that was in the real world versus the uh, virtual world, or how did that work? Uh, yeah, so we had to um, uh, play with the settings of each metaverse. Depending on the virtual world, you can do certain things. Uh, in Artgate, for example, uh, we had one of the template galleries, so it's really an octagonal white space. You can't do a lot with it, but I was really familiar with the technology. And especially, it's, um, it's a metaverse that is very stable uh, in terms of social interactions. So the avatars on the left, uh, they're just like pixels, uh, co colored pixels. And what I wanted to showcase to people is not just about an exhibition in virtual reality. It's a metaverse experience. The fact that you can meet someone else that you know in the same gallery space and explore art together. And that was meaningful because 90% of people never done VR before, but can tell you 99% of people never had what we have right now. And I mean, we are doing this since 2018, 19. Mm -hmm. Like I'm in the metaverse since 2016, since I got the HTC Vive. And for me, it is sounds so familiar to do what we do, but for some people, the perspective of meeting someone else, shaking a hand in virtual reality is something that they don't understand yet. And I wanted to show them that it was possible. So yeah, definitely we had multiple VR headsets and we want to show them what is it to experience art together in a virtual space. And uh, we had great feedback. It was, it, was, it was a great, great experience. A learning experience, but it's a great experience. 
Uh, we've got a picture here of uh, some folks that are uh, that maybe are trying for the first time. That might be you in the middle there in the Beats, the Beats Space version of Candice. I'm not sure. Uh, and it looks like you are doing this. Some people are wearing masks and some aren't. And so how is it a challenge to deal with COVID uh, times while you have a real, uh, a real virtual, a real and virtual space? So I have I have good feedback about that. So that was really challenging to deal with the internet network. Uh, we realized that when you exhibit in physical environment in the spaces, um, usually you have to deal with their own network, their own internet connections. And some of them had uh, firewalls that were blocking metaverse experiences. So we had to work all day with their tech team to be able to uh, resolve the problem. Um, so that was the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge was uh, IGN. So what I did is I learned from my experience traveling in South Korea and Japan. I love these countries. Like if you haven't been in South Korea and Japan, like Seoul and Tokyo, they are so advanced in terms of virtual reality. And uh, obviously, mm -hmm. there I did a lot of virtual reality experiences. And they all have this tissue mask that they use under the virtual reality headset instead of using chemical products like I've seen in the United States or Canada. Everywhere I go in Canada, you know, in between users, they use this kind of chemical products to clean out the VR headset and then you put it on your face. And I'm not sure that it's safe, to be honest. So mm -hmm. what I've learned is follow the Japanese and South Korea style and use this tissue mask uh, for, for each user uh, because it, it's a great way to protect people, protect the mask too, because women with makeup, it's a disaster. Uh, they will ruin your headset. And uh, um, yeah, keep people safe. If they want to wear a mask, encourage them to wear a mask, definitely. I guess you know that is a, a good point, though. That uh, you know, having people have their first experiences, if they don't have a headset at home, where are they going to have that? They're not going to go to. Uh, there's not many arcades set up yet, virtual reality arcades. So going to an art gallery and having the experience there is really uh, some places that, that would happen. So you really are uh, one of the ones who are helping people have their first experience. Um, exactly. I really great. reach out to traditional art people who never been in VR before. Uh, we had a really good experience uh, in Ottawa. A week later, when we were exhibiting at the National Art Center for a day, uh, because we shared a booth with Meta. And Meta featured, you know, like Beat Saber and that kind of game in VR. So uh, that kind of experiences attracted like kids and teenagers. But what we had is like a lot of older people who are not comfortable, you know, who don't know which button to play and are intimidated for us. The experience that we had in the gallery space, you just need to move the joystick and move your head around, and that's that. And that was a great way to introduce people in a calm and peaceful way to the potential of virtual reality, but also of the metaverse, of the fact that they can meet their partner in the metaverse and explore art together. So uh, we had a lot of positive feedback. Everybody loved it. Great. Well, we hope that next time you'll bring uh, your art gallery to Alt Space so that we can all enjoy it and just teleport over there uh, straight from this stage. That's what we're, we're, we're hoping, right, everybody? Right? We mm -hmm. want to. <laughs> um, Definitely. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that kind of brings us to, um, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, the future. And it, it seems to me like, um, you know, you're saying that art is just exploding into all these different facets. Um, one of them seems to be experiencing art, experiential art. It's not something that you go and look at in a gallery and it's more, it's something that you now are immersed with and you can interact mm -hmm. with. Would you say that that's one of the many trends that are, you're, you're seeing? Yeah, we see um, uh, an expansion of uh, experiences uh, that are immersive. So more and more you can have Immersive Van Gogh exhibition, immersive Klimt exhibition, immersive Picasso exhibition. And I'm not saying that it's good. It is definitely something that attracts people mm -hmm. and all of them to discover traditional art in a whole new way. I, I don't love that kind of things. I actually prefer immersive experience like um, uh, Team Labs, another Japanese uh, collective. And Team Labs do this 
amazing 3D mapping projects that are not only like 3D mapping that map the entire ceiling and ground and wall. It's also interactive. So the 3D projections see you and interact with the users. It's amazing in terms of technology. It's 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 a real pleasure to to do that kind of experiences. So this is definitely what comes next. And uh, I think people like it. I think it's a good way to bring people back to museum exhibitions and, and make them want to experience art, not just with their vision, but also with their own body. It's a whole embodied experience. Um, and um, uh, I also like when they have virtual reality headsets, so you can also have immersive experiences. Uh, I, I've seen also museum exhibition focusing on uh, virtual reality experiences with uh, Tesla suits, but you know, like equipment. So sometimes mm -hmm. uh, you have like more uh, haptic feedbacks. Yeah. You know, they really try to push the boundaries once again of what can be done, uh, not just with virtual reality, but also with the equipment and technology that you can add to the experience. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a huge topic and a huge future. And if anyone here had any, uh, on where we're headed, where art is headed, NFTs, AI art, generative art, anything. This is uh, your chance to either uh, give your opinion or, or ask Candice uh, a question about that. Um, and so I guess uh, my question while we uh, wait and see if the audience has any is what's next for Art Collision, which is your, how does it all fit? So Art Collision is sort of your company and you founded this gallery experience, but um, how does that work and what's the future for uh, for you and your companies? So uh, Art Collision is doing very well. We were uh, officially the Canada. So now we are not just uh, supported by the government of Canada. They also send us a lot of clients to help them to adopt immersive technologies, redo their entire website. So we have a lot of work, definitely. We are very busy. The team is getting bigger. I also get grants to hire a COO, um, uh, which is an um, um, uh, operation officer. So someone who's like helping me with the management of the company. So um, uh, we have the chance to partner now just with individual artists and small commercial art galleries, uh, we are uh, getting ready to do bigger collaborations with museum institutions, auction houses, uh, universities, and um, work on bigger contracts. So, you know, we are used to work on like $5,000, $10,000 contracts, but now um, we are getting to a point where we want to tackle bigger projects, you know, like $50,000, 100K, because we think that we have uh, the potential to do it, definitively. It's just about reaching out to the right person, the right people, and making the right partnerships and grow steadily, slowly, but, but aggressively. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, we can't wait to see you continue to grow. I love that you're expanding because we're in a period now where it feels like a little bit like the... Uh, the NFT bubble has burst, and that that area is is in a bit of a uh, retraction. But of course, the uh, AI art seems to be expanding, and so I'm glad that you are finding that uh, you're not stalling your uh, your motive, uh, your your momentum. That's great. Um, there are a lot of um, ideas and things to do. Uh, like I'm working at the University of French Ontario, and uh, one of the teachers came to me, and she was like, "We have a lot of budget." What is your dream? What do you think we should do? And I was like, oh, I have a half a million dollar project in my head. I would like to be able to collaborate with all museum institutions in Canada and do 3D scans of their collections and antiques to make, them, uh, to make the 3D models available for free on a website for everybody in the world. And she was like, oh, but we might have funds for that. It's, it's a great project. We need to work on it. We need to make a proposal. So there are definitely money. You just need to find the right organizations and partner with the right people. And definitely you can help your industry to get better and uh, be more innovative. Wow, that's great. And, and kudos to the Canadian government for always sort of pushing the envelope and, and trying to new things and being experimental, right? Um, 
right? Having yeah. Lived, mm -hmm. yeah, having having been born in Canada myself uh, in the real world, I can say that uh, you appreciate <laughs> that about it. Um, looks like Joanna has a uh, Joanne has a question here or a thought. Uh, yes, Joanne. Yeah. Um, so my husband does music, and I do digital art and digital video to accompany that. And I'm just curious your thoughts on that. And you sell our NFTs as a package like that. And I have this vision that a gallery, physical gallery, would be open to perhaps uh, LCD screens with video visuals and the music playing as part of the exhibit. Do you see that? Have you seen that? Or do you see that coming? Yes, definitely. I think uh, music, uh, uh, music on the blockchain has a lot of tools uh, for uh, you know artist rights, attribution, provenance, uh, traceability. You know all these reasons that we all know. I'm not going to list them here. Um, however, I've seen early adopters, art galleries. I'm thinking about Snark.art, which is an art gallery built, uh, based in Chelsea, uh, near New York City in the United States. And they represented in 2020, 2021 already, um, uh, sounds and music generated by AI on the blockchain. So there were really early adopters. I think, I think you can do a lot. And uh, if you want to exhibit that kind of artwork in a physical setting, it's totally possible to do it. You just need to have a soundtrack somehow and some headphones. I've seen that in many commercial art galleries and museum institutions. Um, I, I don't see why we couldn't yeah, showcasing to people. Yeah. Cool. Well, we are uh, excited. We're going to have Joanne on our stage at the new year, 2023. So we'll learn all about her uh, various projects. We're excited about that. Uh, City Girl, mm -hmm. how's it going? Good. How are you? Great. I just had two comments. Um, going back to some of the earlier things that, that you said. Um, so one of them, you know, when we talk about AI art and, you know, the, the how does that rank up there in the in the world of art and how is it you know considered art with with or the as opposed to traditional but i think that you know one of the big things to remember is that like at the end of the day beauty's in the eye of the beholder and whether it is paint splashes up against a canvas mm -hmm. or somebody who spent 12 hours you know generating a face with a with a pencil and charcoal um you know as far as the value, it comes down to what people are willing to pay for it. But when you look at something, I mean, we could walk through a store together and you could see a beautiful landscape and fall in love with it. I could see a picture of a unicorn and think it's the greatest thing I ever saw. So mm -hmm. I, I do think there is plenty of room out there and there's so many different styles of art that whether it's, you know, a, a AI generated or hand painted, I do think there's both of them and it will have each one will continue to have its audience. I don't think traditional art will go away. I just think that this is a new medium that it also opens doors for a lot of amateurs and people who would never have artistic ability to be able to enjoy something that's a, you know, a, a creative. Um, so that, that's just my opinion on that. Uh, but the other mm -hmm. thing too is, you know, when you, you talk about, um, you know, NFTs and, and the downturn right now, which is, you know, a little bit directly related to, uh, not a little bit, but a lot directly related to the market in general. I mean, it's not NFTs as an investment right now isn't the safest, but I mean, it, that's also relative to the fact that, you know, the markets all over the place are, are in a really a, a bad place. But during all this, you know, that has not stopped a lot of the you know corporate entities from creating NFTs from individual artists to continue creating NFTs and pushing them out there i mean the amount of you know NFT artists that i follow like on on uh, twitter and instagram and social media in general i mean every day they're pushing out new pieces a lot of the people that i've interviewed in the past on yummy nfts and you know people that i talk to now with crypto city they're generating artwork continuously and pushing it out there. They're not letting it stop them just because the market's in a downturn, which, you know, in, in general, you, you're not going to pull out all your investments in, you know, whether you're in the stock market or in the crypto market, you're not going to pull it all out. 
you know, you might play it a little safe for a bit and ride it out and see what happens down the road. But I don't think that NFTs, I think NFTs are in a, a little bit of, of a tough spot right now, but I don't think they're going away. I think they're going to creatively keep coming up with better ways to use them, whether it's digital uh, wearables or, or different aspects. But that's, again, just my opinion, but that's where I feel like we're at right now. Mm. And it's a, good, it's a good time to reflect on the current situation and to maybe start to build bridges between the digital art scene the, 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 the physical world. Maybe it's time to bring more NFTs to people instead of asking people to go discover what is the blockchain, what is digital art. Um, and maybe we need to open more gallery spaces. Maybe we need to ask to museum institutions, commercial art galleries to uh, give more space to NFTs and digital uh, productions. It's a good time to reflect. It's a good time to think about the different methods we can adopt to exhibit this uh, this new medium and this new this new media. Absolutely, and, and hopefully, you know, by the time the next sort of cycle comes around, we don't even need to use the terms NFTs. They'll just be considered art, but it happens to be on the blockchain or it happens to be an unfungible token. But we don't need to express it in that way. It'll just sort of become, uh, you know, first with all of of society and art. So uh, yeah, hopefully it keeps expanding and growing. Um, all right, so Brian has something here. Yes, Brian, where's Brian? There is Hebrew Hammer. Hello. How's it going? Got it, what's up everybody? I just have a Hi, couple Brian. of reflections. No, oh, I just have a couple of reflections on just all this with art and technology in general. One of the things when I think of art, I think of art as an emotional output. So everyone's really an artist. So in the end, art really needs to be looked at at a much greater scale and a much greater scope. So what we are normally looking at, what is traditional art form. And the interesting thing about technology these days, like with artificial intelligence, but there's a lot of good and bad things about artificial intelligence, but the truth is AI art is really neutral or AI is really neutral because it's what we do with it. So I think really as artists, we need to put good intention into it and show that it's not just about you know, being someone you may not be, but it's about taking a craft and taking it to the next level. The interesting oh, yes. thing about NFTs, um, I've been following this for a bit and pretty much involved with a lot of different organizations working in these different modalities. And the beauty of an NFT is not that it's a piece of art. The truth is an NFT isn't a piece of art. NFT is a smart contract and the way of the future, the non-fungible token. And what's happened is kind of gotten the... Uh, reputation or the idea of that it is art when truthfully yes it starts as art but the truth is it's the way of the future so i think us as artists need to kind of help promote that in a way where it's not about you know just a jpeg but it really is it's about a non-fungible token and a smart contract and the way we can have transparency in the economy so all these things are way beyond art and the beauty the beautiful thing about these things are we as artists can actually paint a picture for people so they see the powerful and the intentions behind it versus people trying to take advantage and take control. I really think that all of this stuff is really positive, but we just really need to take the initiative and move forward with it. I wanted to say that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, once again, doing art is about pushing boundaries, showing the potential of what we can do. And, uh, it's beautiful in a certain way. We need we need to appreciate that the fact that it's wonderless. Absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, uh, for your thoughts and comments. All uh, really interesting perspectives, and uh, you know, it's such a wide open world. Uh, who knows what's what's coming around the corner? Um, so, Anis, anything else you want to say before uh, we let you go back to the real world? Um, we've we've loved having you here. Um, I guess before I'll let you you talk, I should say that uh, as we're on the conversation of NFTs, uh, what we've done is we have minted uh, an NFT for you, and uh, we are going to give it to you. Uh, it's on OpenSea right <laughs> so now. So sweet. Uh, yeah, we did it on the Polygon Network, and it's called. Um, you know, art in the age of AI. And we created this uh, artwork with um, Midjourney version four. Uh, and essentially what I put in is a prompt. I put in a number of prompts, but the main prompt was 
what is art in the uh, age of AI? And this is one of the objects that came out and I thought it was really interesting. And so we would love uh, for you to have it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's so thoughtful. Uh, it's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always yeah. happy to add a new piece to my NFT collection. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, we're definitely happy to give it to you. Um, I think before we uh, close out, oh, Jules, did you have something you wanted to add? Okay. Uh, is that a yes or a no? Oh, here we go. Let's see what Jules has to say here. How's it going, Jules? Oh, hey. Hi. Hi, Johnny. How you doing? Um, this Good. is... This is really great. I mean, I'm sorry I came in late, but, but, but everything that you said. I'm from Vancouver, by the way. You're, you're oh, over there. Hi. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, it's a, it was a really pleasure to, to listen to what you had to say. My question is, uh, what kind of utility out there is sort of trending a little bit? In terms of you know NFTs, you have to give more to receive a bit. And you you mentioned a few mm -hmm. things, bringing people in and trading and so forth. But um, we're talking to like you just said, you are mentioning people who have never even heard about it, right? And so um, mm -hmm. I just feel like artists are continuously, you know, sharing of their skills, sharing of themselves, sharing on social media, sharing on everything else. So you know, we have a limited amount of time. What is pragmatic? you and your clients thank you very much uh thank you for your question it's it's definitely a good one uh we work with a lot of people who are not comfortable with the blockchain technology they do not understand the potential of this technology yet so some of them are very interested they want to learn more about what is an nft what you can do but they don't even have um, um a meta wallet they don't even know how to make transactions on the blockchain. They never done it before. So it's a whole process because it's, it requires a lot of education, a lot of communication, a lot of patience. Um, and uh, sometimes it's maybe it's the challenging part because it's what I love. I love working with the traditional art world, but I also understand the potential of immersive technologies. So um, I'm patient, definitely. And every time someone is asking me questions, I try to take the time to answer them, to help them, to guide them. Uh, but the NFT scene is a tricky scene and um, um, it's easy to get lost a bit. There's a lot of information, a lot of options. Um, so I definitely encourage my clients to get educated, to take the time to learn, and to choose carefully the artists that they want to follow and collect. Well, you know, I've, I, I was piecing it together there. Uh, Jules, you, have, you go by so many names. Jules, of course, is uh, also known as Flash Mango, also known as Juliana Lowe, who is an incredible virtual artist. So we're happy to have her here and we're happy that you guys have sort of virtually connected here. That's uh, amazing. Um, Troy has one more thought here and then we'll, uh, we'll close it out. How's it going, Troy? Hello again, good to be here. Um, yeah, I'm also one of these uh, <laughs> AI artists that uh, was part of the thing. Um, but anyway, um, I was, all this discussion got me curious if everybody was actually aware about Instagram's plan to like host and mint NFTs. And if mm. your opinion is yeah. that could be a game changer or if it's maybe not. Uh, yeah, definitely. So I'm already on the trial. So I was able to synchronize my meta wallet with my Instagram account. I was even able to synchronize my meta wallet with multiple Instagram accounts. So that was the first step. Uh, it's connected directly to the NFTs I have uh, in my wallet, and I'm able to feature it on the feed. So since we got access to this new feature, we are also planning to do a giveaway to close the, the, the exhibition we had in Floating Point Gallery. Um, and it will be a way for us to explore this new feature and see you, you know, how it works, if it's first <laughs> if it works well um, and what can you do i believe it's going to be nothing else but just a listing right it's probably just going to be a post that will be linked 
to whatever artwork will mean uh, on Polygon. So uh, we have a lot of wearables that we minted for the Metaverse Crypto Voxels. We are planning to do it like the first week of the second week of December, just to give it a try with my team and see how it works. If it works well and people are interested, we might continue to do it for the mission. Why not? Yeah, I, we're, we're also on that beta program on Instagram. And I, I haven't found it being too impactful yet. I think it's probably because it's not rolled out to a large degree. I think what it allows you to do is just allows more onboarding to people into crypto and onto the NFTs. Uh, but I, I don't know if it itself will expand it uh, uh, because, you know, uh, it, it's like there's so much art every day. Everyone's posting on Instagram. It can get lost in a sea of uh, like what's a real NFT versus what's a JPEG. It doesn't really matter almost on Instagram. Uh, you know, but, um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think the fact that it's just becoming integrated into all the major platforms is be a plus. Definitely, especially because a lot of people shop on Instagram and uh, I developed a lot of my website for the e-commerce solution and you can synchronize the Shopify website with an Instagram account and you can um, uh, help your customers discover your products on Instagram and end up purchasing them with Shopify. And to be honest, it's great. It's a great way to uh, make sense. So if they can do that kind of integration, I'm all into it. Mm -hmm. But you will take times, you know, they need to need to test it and see how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, well, um, well, thank you so, so much, um, Candice, for, for coming and for uh, everyone here. Dave, the Turner, Troy, uh, Jules, great to see you, you Ed, and uh, uh, But Candice, it was really great having you back on the stage. And I, I, I really think I would love for you to come back in like a year or something like that. And we can compare notes and just talk about how things have changed because we know it's going to be a wild year uh, and decade ahead. Thank you so much for inviting me, Johnny. It's a pleasure. And you know what? You make me want to come to the stage. So next time I will come as a, as a, as a viewer and uh, I, I want to learn more about the people you invite because they're always very innovative, uh, for thinking and, uh, Thought leaders, definitely. And I love that. I love meeting people who understand what is the potential of the future. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for teleporting into this WorldCast Simulation Nation. Whether you're with us here in virtual reality, like these people listening to the spot, a podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or watching on YouTube at the Simulation Nation. And remember to subscribe to our Instagram at the Simulation Nation, where we'll be Hanging out with uh, Candice in the uh, you know Instagram Twitterverse, uh, Twitter at SimNationVR and our Discord server. Then join us next week as we revisit the original Avatar, anticipation for Avatar Two: Way of Water. Till then, stay plugged, my friends.